Hello people, welcome to Bedak Farms Academy. My name is Kennedy, a Guinean poultry farmer and also a US Navy veteran. And I always want to appreciate your time being here and all the effort that you are using to support this family that we are building and also helping one another to uh, see this channel. If today is your first time, people, you're on the right channel to learn how to own your own business about property farming and other agribusiness and also you can like our page share and subscribe people so that we can reach more people and they also become part of this family thank you so much so today i know you've seen the topic already how we lost ten thousand ghana cities every week for about uh, let's say three to uh, two months or three months, we have been losing 10,000 Ghana cities weekly. I mean, I know you are kind of, wow, yeah, it's true about poultry farming. And these are some of the things people don't come out to say. And we always preach, oh, I'm making this, I'm making this money, I'm making this money. But um, as I always say, I'm here to let you know the realities in poultry farming. I'm not here to sugarcoat Oh, I make this number of money. It's all, it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's good, but I also want to know the realities. If you're going in, some of the mistakes that we are making, you don't make the same mistake. Don't make the mistake that I make. If you make the same mistake, then you are not learning. But that's why mostly uh, I put myself out there to just let people use me as a case study, okay, to learn the thing that I did wrong and the thing that I'm doing right. That you can also follow and you can also i mean learn from it so today we are talking about how we lost uh, ten thousand ghana cities weekly so i'm not saying like one uh, ten thousand ghana cities only one time no weekly more than like two months constantly we were losing that amount of money somebody who asked what happened ken that is what i'm here to tell you exactly what happened and how we have been able to resolve it and we are coming out of all these issues. You can see that, oh, this guy is kind of going through a lot. Yeah, so at times people call and I say, yeah, I'm dealing with it, but I have to still get time for you. And that's what life is about. Uh, so what really happened? Let me start with everything. So what happened is that every year we have people who provide us with maize. I know my, I lost my, what is the name? My case I just heard about so let's continue so every year we have people who surprise maize like the whole season so what happens is that we give them the number of bags that the number of bags that we're gonna use the whole year to them so we did the whole calculation gave it to them the people who surprise the maize I know every week we we consume more than uh, 140 150 bags of maize i'm talking about the 130 kilo bag the bigger ones that's what we consume 130 to uh, 130 to 150 bags every week that is it a lot of bags so we did the whole calculations gave it to the guy who surprised the maize good so we know the whole season we're gonna have continuous surprise so we're not going to break out and then we're gonna be running at searching for maize so what happened uh, is that, let me, let's fast forward everything. What happened is that when I was in Ghana, me and Sammy sat down, we did our calculations, everything. Hey, before the end of the year, this is what we need. We give it to the person. And he also went through his calculation. Okay, I can do all that for you. I said, okay, let's continue. And getting to, uh, I think, August ending, beginning of uh, September, the supplier came in and said, oh, I have, I'm, I'm short of maize or we are in shortage. I said, then what, what are you telling me? Because we did our calculations right. Now we can have the supply for you. I said, then we have no option to, for you to give us the maize or go out and just buy new maize, uh, buy maize from somewhere. And you, you know the number that I'm talking about, 140 bucks or 150 bucks every week, 140 to 50 every week. So you are going to buy a month maize i'm going to like 600 bucks the bigger ones and now i have to go in negotiate with another person so to bring everything to conclusion the guy said okay now i have a new maze that is coming in i can dry it for you i can make it everything ready for you i said okay 
if you can do that for us we are into business we have to always help one another for you also to uh, continue so we took the mail from the man prepare the mail somebody may say ken you have been in this business why did this happen <laughs> that's what i'm coming today so the man gave us the maze not knowing the maze not really dry i have all this machine that we used to dry them uh, that we used to check the moisture of the maze but it wasn't with us so what we suddenly realized that the maze wasn't purely dry so he started to dry them also again dry them so that we may have a good maze so they started to grind the maize and give it to the bears not knowing it wasn't even really dry and we have nothing to do and we don't have all these uh tossing bandits also there to give to them and we are trying different different tossing bandits i don't want to uh, say much about all these tossing bandits but afro band wasn't there so let me say that one so because we are, we are out of stock so we started giving the maize to them and one thing that happened within that week is that the, the the production dropped from like 80 something percent like 85 mostly we are around 85 80 percent that about we dropped from 80 percent all the way to like 50 55 percent people i'm talking about fifty thousand bags and everything is like boom 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 so the whole production was crazy the size of the eggs were decreasing you can see if you take an egg that we sell for like 18 ghana cities a crate we were selling them like 16 ghana cities because the side were decreasing so what should we do we just have to come in very quick try to know how we can solve the situation so what we did right away was uh it's because seeing the thing has happened it's going to take like more than like a two months to recover that's why this november is the time that we are recovering by the whole of september october it wasn't easy people it wasn't easy so what we were doing is we were trying to bring in the other maize that people uh, that we can buy from market and try to uh, lower the quantity of the of the of the maize of the new maize so that we don't have to continue that kind of crisis so we were trying to mix them together and we were very quick to dry to search for dried machines and we were not getting some somebody may say why don't you build our, our own one i'm coming to the solution and that is one of one of them so we the early solution that we did was dry them more prepare the feed early and we can give it to the bears so the solution that we did to cover all this is, i started to give you solutions but let me talk about all of them the solutions one to prepare the feed early so the maize that is not really dry we prepare them let's say the night before so the early morning so we prepare the maize or we grind the maize in that night spread it across or spread it in the room so that we can have that fresh air blow over it the next morning right away we add all this afro uh, afro thousands to it and we give it to the bed that was the way out so that we can be able to do that reduce the number of uh, the production that was going uh, low so that that is one of it because for the white maize or for the uh, the maize that have a higher moisture or there's too much moisture in it when you grind it it's very very hot it's very very hot so what we did was to grind it very early in the night or in the middle of the night or in the night and let air pass over it and we can do so the next one was we have to go in for good poison bandage because most of the tourism bandages in the market are kind of something, you know. So we have to go in to buy good tourism bandages. Afro band is one of them, but it was out of stock. We buy some uh, drop off and other ones of them. So we have to add more tourism bandages so that it can still hold the best their system to be able to control that uh, issues. And the next one that we have that we have to do is to get more of the uh, dry maize and reduce the uh, the most uh, the what is the name the new maze the one that it wasn't so dry so that we can be able to bring it down so people if you are in today's farming and portal farming and the new maze that is coming up if you're about to use them take your time don't rush into it we did not right we did not go into it because we think maybe the cost is coming down no oh let's go in because the person who is supposed to prove uh, uh, supply us that is what he he was giving to us 
but we have all these negotiations but it never worked for us you know business is part of risk taking and all that and uh, we have money to maneuver our way out and now we are coming out even though we are still losing some money uh, about maybe three thousand four thousand Ghana cities then well, that one we take it in a good way as compared to four, uh, ten thousand and over every week that was too much that was a lot of blow for me and uh, the whole team as i mean he was very in a very hot seat you know me always calling him banging on him man we need to get things done we need to feel these things so at times too if you have a manager in ghana uh, when these things happens search for ways for them think with them cope, uh, team up with them cope, uh, what is that? cooperate with them or coordinate with them instead of you maybe what is that why is the ex going down do this do this i always call it what can we do can we do this one so one thing that we're also trying to do from the next subsequent years is to build a drying machine we decided to do that earlier on but you know because of the maze issue that came along we paused it and said no let's stop it and maybe let's try to focus because the maze price was hitting us so hard so building that maze machine, which was going to cost us like 30 to 40,000 Ghana cities. I'm talking about 300 million to 400 million. I said, no, let's go in and buy a lot of maize. And later on, it has come to hit us. We have lost more money than if you would have established that machine. So I mean, like, the team, me, my, uh, myself and Sammy, we have learned a lesson from it. And now we are coming up with that machine too. So these are some of the things that I'll tell you. Team up with them. Uh, Times you'll be hard with them, times you have to be soft with them and uh, go through. And people, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, YouTube channel is there here. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and let's build this family together. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sugarcoating anything for you. I'm not going to say one day I'll tell you how much money maybe I make on poultry farming or I'm making poultry farming. And somebody will say, Carrie, I'll be waiting for that video for a long time. It will come. I don't want to maybe use money. I don't really value money in life so much as compared to relationship. That's why I want us to be more like a family. But one time too, as I'm giving you the thing that I'm going negatively, I also give the positive one. Maybe after my gross income, uh, the, the gross income of the of the farms, uh, profit. Do you go have too much profit out of that? I'll tell you. Uh, at times, you don't know how we suffer. And I'll bring the next video to you the next time. Is the bigger farm suffering or not? Those maybe I'll say I'm the middle, fifty thousand. I'm in the middle. Those with a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Are they suffering or not? I'll tell you the reality for you to know. So people, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's build this big family. So we meet next time. I say chase your dreams and money will follow you. Peace. Shalom.